It's a cool evening in Southern California. Look at that. Brian Fuentes, the Angels closer, leading the bullpen train through left field. It looks like a group of grade school kids out of the playground doing a little caterpillar. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Mother Duckling, by the way. And Little Duckling's following Fuentes out to the pin, giving slapping some fives to the people. Give it up. Every one of them following their leader. Oh, you got to have a little boy in you to play this great game of baseball. And there is Brian. It is a cool evening, though. We come to you from the Big A for the first of a three-game series between the Mariners and the Angels. They played ten games, and these two teams, five wins each. The Mariners batting order, each hero at least 100 runs, 200 hits, and 30 steals all eight years in the bigs. Betancourt moves from nine to two, then Beltre, Griffey, Branyan, Lopez, Johnson, Chavez, and Gutierrez. On the mound for the Angels is John Lackey, the 30-year-old right-hander at Abilene, Texas. Has one win this year, and he's eight wins shy of 100 in his big league career. That's right. Big John's on the slab, making his 210th career start tonight, and that ties him with the great Mark Langston for fourth all-time on the Angels list. Big John Lackey used that two-seamer. Got a nice breaking ball to finish him off, a couple change-ups, but command that zone with the two-seam fastball both sides of the plate. Defending behind him. Angels now are seventh in the pack of 14 in the American League. Juan Rivera playing a great left field. We all know Torrey Hunter is a phenomenal center fielder. Abreu out there. We got Kendra Morales. Howie Kendrick and Ibar up the, bringing up the middle. We got Sean Figgins getting figured with it. Mike Napoli's getting the call again with Big John Lackey. And we're going to show you Juan Rivera. I'm telling you, this guy is, is really amped about being an everyday left fielder. Does not want to lose that toe hold. He's been playing airtight defense and showing off that good arm. He has held a lot of guys who look like they would get doubles to one base. Lackey's first pitch of the ball game is inside ball one. Ichiro with a 21 game hit streak going, batting 391. Who holds the all time Seattle record for consecutive games with a base hit? Ichiro Suzuki. Two years ago, 25 in a row. This is a 312 lifetime off of Big John Lackey. One home run. That's some pretty good numbers. They bring him inside, and it's popped up left side. Out goes Eric Ibar, and that's the first out of the ball game. Well, they'll take that. He beat you off the base. And have him popping up like that is no threat with his speed. Because when that guy hits one on the ground, man, it's going to be a tough play at first to get it. John was shut down in spring training due to strained right forearm, missed 33 games, made his first start against the Texas Rangers, only threw two pitches. He threw one behind Ian Kinsler of the Rangers. The next one hit him, thrown out of the ball game, came back to beat Seattle, and then received a no decision in his last outing on Saturday at Dodger Stadium. Left with the lead, Angels bullpen could not hold on. Figgins has it. Betcourt is the second out. So far, looking at John's two-seamer, it's got some really good movement on it. I don't know if he's taking a little bit off or what, but it's, it's moving pretty well. So far, so good. Two outs, five pitches thrown. What he likes about tonight's ball game is he said the pitch count has been taken off. He can go as far as he needs for his manager, Mike Sosha. Well, he wants to focus on strike one, getting, getting ahead of guys. Jared Weaver was flat sensational with that. 22 of the first 30 he faced through strike one two. The 30 Chicago White Sox and we've got the win. It's fourth of the year. Angels lost two of three but did win the finale on Wednesday. Ground ball short. Ibar eats it up. Quick one two three first inning for Lackey. We head to the bottom of the first to we'll see another hit streak. John Figgins trying to make it 16 in a row.
rest and watch the Angels batting order. It's brought to you by AMPM. Sean Figgins to lead things off with a 15 game hit streak. Then Bobby Abreu. Look at his numbers in his career against Seattle. Wow. Vlad Guerrero, he always hits the M's well. He'll go three, then Hunter four. Rivera, Morales, Napoli, Kendrick, and Ibar. Watch out for Rivera and Napoli. They've both been very good this year against lefties, and the Angels will see a lefty in Jason Vargas. Marlins second round pick 2004 out of Long Beach State and he bounced around a little bit and wound up with Seattle good numbers early. That's right in his three starts. He's been very impressive. He's got th you know three pitches that he'll use as the left hander. Uh, he relies on command and his ability to change speeds. He's didn't have enough to make mistakes over the middle enough power though is he's only going to go about 90 but he does a solid job though pitching inside to both left and right handed hitters. Fastball slider changeup. His changeup is above average, and he'll use that quite often against right handed batters. He is a 26 year old lefty out of Apple Valley, California. Son of a high school baseball coach, so he's been around the game his entire life. He's facing Sean Figgins. And Figgins, we told you what a great job he has done, hitting 391 over the last 15 straight. Outside corner rests in there two balls and one strike Halo's holding their own against left handed starters this year with a record of eight and seven They are hitting 280 off of southpaws this year, which is a pretty good mark anything above 280 is good Fouled off two balls and two strikes when Vargas was at Long Beach State He was the number two starter on the staff number one of course was that all-american Jared Weaver who pitched for the Angels on Wednesday that's a pretty good one two combination. Fouled off. Okay, not really having a solid swing and miss pitch like Vargas at this big league level. Angels will kind of tax him a little bit like Figgy's doing. Foul off as many pitches as he can. Try to get deep in the counts. Goes after him with the fastball. It's lifted in the air. Right side, Ichiro will take care of it. And there's one down in the bottom of the first. Okay, defending behind the young pitcher Vargas. You can see the last place fielding team this year. They're having some troubles with made, they made 38 errors. Okay, but Duck, Betancourt, Lopez are up the middle. Got Rob Johnson behind the plate now with the injury to Kenji Jojima. So Beltre, though, is a lot of fun to watch play third base. And with a left hander on the mound, most hitters are right handed. So they'll be pulling a lot of balls down to Beltre. Watch out for him. This guy's a really good player. And he can move his feet and his arm angle is phenomenal. Vargas delivers strike one to Bobby Abreu. Right now the Angels number two hitter with Vlad Guerrero coming off the DL. Bobby was in the three spot. He had the big hit on Wednesday when the Angels were trailing one nothing to Gavin Floyd. Mathis singled, Figgins singled, then Abreu doubled in two. And the Angels never looked back to win it 3-1 because Weaver was throwing a gem. Abreu, very good two strike hitter. Abreu is the only guy to face Vargas. In there, strike three call. He was one for one. So Vargas, he'll take that punch out. You don't see that a whole lot to Abreu. He's, he's making good contact. He's sliding. That's going to be his out pitch. Against left handers. And of course, Abreu is the only left hander in there. Vargas now to play Vladimir Guerrero. And Guerrero back from the disabled list missed 35 games because of a muscle tear in his chest. And he skies this one a mile high left field. Andy Chavez pulls it down. So both starting pitchers with solid first innings. Just missing.
for a homer. <laughs> That'll wake her up. <laughs> Sleeping with the binky in her mouth. Here is John Lackey against Ken Griffey Jr. Fifth all time in home runs with 616. How back? Junior, four for seven lifetime off line, 571 average. So he, he knows that fastball's coming in early, so he took a rip. But Big John keeping it on the outer half. The infielders are all pulled around to play him to pull. Outside. Okay, you got a shift there, okay? You got one, two, three, four. You got all these guys over there on that side, man. They're, they're, they got it all covered. And Junior hits one right back up the middle where Eric Ibar is. One out to start the second inning. That's a normal base hit if they're playing the regular spots, but hey, look, Ibar's camped right under that. If Griffey decides to bunt, he could bunt for a double. Yeah. Now we're going to stay a little bit pulled over for Russell Brannion who's stepping in. See that one. I didn't play perfectly. They're still going to play him to pull, but not as dramatic as Junior. Although Sean Figgins is playing in the hole at shortstop. Because he's a pull hitter. And he lines it towards left and dumps it in for a base hit. Brannion has been on fire lately. He has played so well as the starting first baseman for Seattle. Kids come out to the Big A tomorrow night as all kids ages 2 through 18 in attendance will receive a free rally monkey board game set courtesy of Stremix Heritage Foods. This two in one set includes game favorites checkers and tic tac toe. Tickets for this game are still available for $10 in the entire 500 view level when using the password fastball at the Angel Stadium ticket window or angelsbaseball.com. Jose Lopez the batter first pitch is down low and outside one and oh Lackey's one win was against Seattle he gave up four runs in five innings didn't have his command didn't have that great snap to his breaking ball but we saw that against the Dodgers That'll nail it on the outside corner for a guy who's six six Usually you don't see six six guys with such great command but Lackey's one of those rare ones. Well, you know he he's got a nice little downhill plane. You know he comes after guys not afraid very tough physically and mentally. He's a bulldog. And one of the facts that Big John's 35 and 21 in his career versus the West makes him a West killer. He knows how important these games are. And in, in their own division. Angels this year they could they could try to pick that up a little bit as they are against the West. Eight and ten. Foul. Lopez got a great year last year 297 average at 644 plate appearances. That's a full year 17 home runs. But this year he's been struggling a little bit. He's a little bit jumpy at the plate. He really hasn't found himself yet. It's still early. Because you thought as he matures as a hitter, he would put together solid season after solid season, but only hitting 216 this year. And he checks or he sweeps at it and fouls the ball in the dirt. The count stays at two balls and two strikes. But they've had a major problem at the start of their lineup. And with their team batting average, it is 12th in the American League and batting at 253 and dead last in runs scored under four. Don Wakamatsu has been shaking up his lineup moving guys from the middle of the order further up other guys who were up in the order further down and he Chavez first time we saw Seattle was hitting second now he's hitting eighth. He's been experimenting in that lineup a lot like Mike Sosha when you're not having you know a lot of success in your lineup you're going to mix it around a little bit the only studies are really junior junior has been staying at that number four spot you see him there with Mike Sweeney messing around. Lopez again knocks it foul that time they were sending the runner Brannion to stay out of the double play. Brannion he's just your kind of a situational type base dealer. Brannion has two stolen bases this year. His last one came against the Angels in Seattle. Meantime Lackey battling Lopez the next pitch will be the eighth to Jose runner likely going here. That's to stay out of the double play. Lopez is grounded to 10 already this year. 
He goes, pitches swung on, grounded to short. Ibar gets one. He'll turn it. Nice dig by Morales at first base, and they get the 6 4 3 double play despite Wakamatsu sending the lead runner, Branyan. Ball was hit hard. Roll it up. Situation runner at first. He gets the ground ball on a good ball down in that strike zone. And the result is a 6 4 3 double play. Jason Vargas back out on the hill for Seattle to face Tory Hunter, Juan Rivera, and Kemby Morales in the bottom of the second inning. Vargas pitch catches the outside corner for strike one. Hey, just going to try to keep that sinker down in the zone. Is all Vargas is concerned about. Three starts, I mentioned. He's done a nice job. Hunter skies it in the air left side much like Vlad Guerrero did to end the first and Bentoncourt in shallow left field makes the catch for out number one. Jason Vargas out of Apple Valley California. We told you the son of a high school baseball coach who really understood the game and when he was drafted he did not sign out of high school instead went to LSU great baseball program and he said it wasn't a coach's fault I just wasn't crazy about that area and so he came back went to Cypress JC and then we told you about the one two combination he and Jared Weaver when he transferred to Long Beach State Juan Rivera this he is has the four home runs this year three against Seattle right and, you know this is the kind of left hander that Juan really thrives off of not, not overpowering He's got really nice pull power. He's been showing it as of late. And he's fourth in the American League with an average versus a left hander at 429. So that's pretty good. In his wheelhouse, barely missed it, got underneath, and it's a strike one and two. All four of Rivera's homers are against lefties. Wait, and that bat's been used a long time there. It's got pine tar all over it. There's the pine tar rack. That's the Moda stick right there, folks. Named after Jose Moda's dad, Manny. You know you're going good. Now, this is a sticky stubbins here that's called the pine tar rag. It's got sticky tar in it. It's kind of dark. And it's sticky. It smells like tar. Uh, they put that on that bat and it gives them a better grip, along with the rosin bag. You need a rosin bag, too, but if you, sometimes you get too much pine tar on there, that rosin bag kind of dries it up a little bit for you. But I tell you, you see all kinds of blisters, uh, calluses formed on a hitter's hands. That's a rosin bag, okay, right there. That's what they, you know, you, it's sticky, kind of helps you get some grip. Um, puts back there in the pitcher's mound, we were just showing you, but they also have one in the on deck circle. The amount of tar that he has put on the bat 
I mean, if Tim McClellan's the home plate umpire, it might be a few years ago, he might drop that across home plate and say, no, it's more than 17 inches. And if Rivera goes deep, he could disallow the home run. That happened to George Brett years ago. Balls popped up. Right side, foul territory. Now back in fair territory, and it's dropped by Branyan. That is his fourth error this year. And for their infield HUD, they have made 27 errors. The Angels starting infield has only aired 12 times. Well, that's a tough one. Wakamatsu is saying, uh, well, hopefully that doesn't hurt us here with one out. Brandon, he's been made an outfielder, third baseman throughout his career. This year's the first time, and just kind of hit that hit in the dead spot and popped out. He had two hands, too. He's, he's up there using two hands, and actually it hit the end of the webbing. What a terrible feeling that is. You know you've got it, and then it bounces out and too far away to grab. Now, Kenby Morales has been swinging a hot bat from this side of the plate. You look down and you go, Morales was only two for ten in the Chicago series. It seemed like he hit the ball hard every time up, but he was lining out to the first baseman, Canerco, or other infielders. Batting 279. In there, and that might be his cut fastball. He's got a good one along with a slider. He's got a very tight slider. Talking to Rick Adair, really likes him. Rick is their pitching coach, and he said, you know, he's a guy who thinks things out. He listens, he makes adjustments well. He's got great poise. Just barely outside. He was the Florida Marlins second round pick out of Long Beach State. And the five one wins one year with Florida. Ground ball struck to the second baseman. Looks like they've got a four six three double play. So the error did not hurt Seattle. Third inning we go looking for our first run. Let's check out our United States Marines leaders of the game. And it's about big John Lackey, who pitches like a Marine, looks like one. Gritty guy, won six straight starts versus Seattle. Bartolo Colon holds the Angels record for wins in consecutive starts versus one team. 11 straight against Texas. We remember that because every time the Rangers would have Colon on the skin, he'd have a big smile on his face like, well, going to pad that uh, record this week. And, you know the guys know that they don't dwell on the stats as much as we do but they certainly are aware of what teams they've had success against and which ones have gotten them. But John has really become the vocal and emotional leader of this pitching staff and that's why it's so great to see him come back from that disabled list both he and Santana on the DL now they're healthy and the Angels just three and a half games back of Texas three and a half games back because. Texas won game one of their doubleheader today against Oakland. 6 3 the final score. And then the Rangers coming back and they lead Oakland in game two of that doubleheader, 5 to 2 in the seventh. Irvin did not pitch well in his last start. 
But he's still coming on. He said it just didn't feel like he had energy and life in any of his pitches coming out of his hand. Well, it, it kind of showed with his velocity as it wasn't in the 93 that we're used to seeing. It's more like in the 90s, and he didn't miss any bats. Hit sharply, backhanded, eye bar, long throw. Man, he airs it out. A laser to first base. One out. You know, that ball hopped up on him at the last second. So you always got to got to be mindful of of a ball coming up on you. He had a nice backhand play. Watch how he stays down, catches it, takes his time, and gets his momentum going back to help him with the velocity on the throw. He showed off his arm there. He's got a good one. Here's a quick guy, Andy Chavez at the plate. Andy got off to a great start. He's hitting in the mid 300s. The team got off to a brilliant start. They were. 15 and 10 out of the gate when they were 12 and 6 they had a three and a half game lead but everything kind of fell apart after that. A big part of the problem Rex was hitting in the clutch when they their first 25 games Seattle hit 324 with men in scoring position. They're batting 164 in the clutch since because of that they've won just seven games and lost 16 in there two and one could be frustrating but I know First year hitting coach for the Mariners this year, Alan Cockrell. He's doing a lot of work on the mental side, trying to keep the, you know, the emotions out of the at bats. Soft line to the left and a drop in front of Juan Rivera. Both base hits by Brandon and Chavez have gone the opposite way and they've come with one out. John Wakamatsu came from the Mike Sosa School of Managing. And when he has speed guys, particularly down in the order, he might hit and run with Chavez and Gutierrez. Mike Sosha steals a lot of bases, hit and runs, tries to stay out of double plays. Yeah, what he's doing is giving Napoli a sign whether to throw over for Indy. Indy's got good speed. In there, strike one. He's six for seven, stealing bases this year. He came over from the New York Mets. Gutierrez added from the Cleveland Indians. Very fine defensive center fielder who lately has been coming through offensively. That's the two seamer that came back and caught the outside corner. Oh, and two to Franklin. He has struck out 33 times this year, so John might go after him. He's got that good hook that gets a lot of strikeouts. See Lackey holding, 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 uh, waiting to freeze Chavez, and they said, "You know what? I'm not ready to throw, so we just backed off." John has struck out as many as 199 in a season. That was back in 2005. Now he will pitch to that situation. Runner does not go, and the pitch is swung on. There's a base hit to right field. Around second on his way to third is Chavez, and Abreu brings the ball to the second baseman. Okay, pretty good pitch up and in. John thought he executed. Gutierrez, though, fought it off. I think it broke his bat, but he it jammed him, and that was able to knock, knock that thing in there right where it was supposed to be hit. Indy Chavez, good quick speed. Now, all of a sudden, the Mariners have a chance with one out here. And Ichiro Suzuki up. Very difficult to double him, although it has happened before. But Ichiro, he's. Just 243 with runners in scoring position, but that's coming up. He was down low in the low twos a week or two ago. He's, he's starting to pick it up some, but normally in the 300s in that category. Shows bunt, bunts foul, and each hero does not bunt for a sacrifice or a suicide or give himself up. He is bunting for a base hit. And Seattle really struggling recently in the last month. With runners in scoring position. And you see their major league rank dead last in the month of May. In there. So Ichiro down in the count. 0 oh 2. 
Figgins will back up a couple of steps at third base. Morales still holding Gutierrez at first base. You know, he's not a guy that normally will strike out very much either. Just 16 times so far this year. John worked him in with that fastball, got him to pop up in the first inning. Comes back inside, and that's golf to right field. How did he hit that? In comes Andy Chavez to make it one nothing Seattle to third. They go. The ball is dropped. Ichiro moves to second base, and Seattle with the early lead. Yeah, man, that's that's on that big curveball, and you're right. Looked like he took a nine iron out and just kind of punched it out to right field. Keeps the hitting streak alive now, 22 games. Said that Napoli was trying to block that ball. That's where it was going to end up. Big job of hitting. This guy's a bad ball hitter. Look at the weight. The weight momentum is all swinging out. It's amazing how talented he is with his hand eye coordination. Watching that last piece of video, it looks like he's golfing. And the ball in this case is moving, and he still hits the fairway. <laughs> They're very interesting. Well, you've got a couple of bad ball hitters in this game tonight Vlad Guerrero and Ichiro Suzuki, but. Seattle has runners on second and third now. Abreu made a fine throw to third. Figgins short hopped it and had a clip off his glove. So the runners in pretty good spots. And here's Bentoncourt. Well, he's been hitting great with men on, not so great with the bases empty. Breaking ball misses outside, 2 0. Oh. Three straight hits off John here in the third inning. Chavez, Gutierrez, and Ichiro. I thought Abreu had a chance to throw out Gutierrez. Ball got there in time. Mm -hmm. Good throw, a little bit high, but short hop piggy. Three and zero. Oh. Would you rather pick pitch to Beltre? His number is much worse than Betancourt with runners on. But a guy who's a Pesky hitter versus a power hitter, and he threw that one like he wanted to walk him. So the bases are loaded. First walk by John in the ball game. He only walked one in seven innings of his last start. Butcher will come out. John might be thinking, I know what I've got to do get the ground ball out and get the double play and get out of trouble. Hey, fans, Angels baseball ticket plans presented by Dave and Busters are now on sale. Choose from the 27 game plan. The 17 game plan or the 12 game dad and grad pack. Guarantee your seats for premium and promotional item games. All ticket plans now include a $20 power card redeemable at Dave and Buster's at the Block of Orange or Irvine Spectrum Centers. Order today by calling 888 796 Halo or visit angelsbaseball.com. Good crowd on hand. Game one of a three game series. Seattle has him loaded in the third. Gutierrez at third, Ichiro second, and Betancourt first. First pitch to Beltre in there, strike one. Beltre grounded out to short. That's exactly what Lackey wants here. Okay, Beltre got a fastball in. Yeah. Outfielders Torrey Hunter, they're playing him to the opposite field gap. A tapper towards third. Figgins has no play. It's an infield hit and a two nothing Seattle lead. So John getting dinked and dunked here in the third inning. Two flares to left field, an absolutely perfect pitch to Ichiro that he golfs to right, and now an infield hit by Beltre. Beltre, he's got to be happy with that. It's an outside pitch he tried to pull, and like Jose Lopez, the second baseman, he's grounded in a ten-double play. So Wakamatsu's saying, "Man, there you go, good jobs. Keep it going." Here is Ken Griffey Jr. Grounded out his first time up. Now the Angels can't play as severe a shift as they did first time up. They have Ibar on the shortstop side of the second base bag, although played to pull. Out of play, one ball, one strike. The Mariners, two, three, and four hitters. Have not been sharp this year, batting a combined 203. That's dead last in the major leagues. Their 13 home runs, 27th in the major leagues. Griffey takes a strike, so he's down in the count one and two.
Griffey's looking middle in. He wants to do some damage. That's where he does it now at this time in his career. Pole power. He used to have opposite field power, but not as much anymore. So Lackey, he's pitching to, to the outside part of the plate. Seattle coming in after a victory over the Oakland Athletics. The Angels at 24 and 22. They beat Chicago their last start. The pitch is in, and somehow Junior is able to keep his hands inside the baseball and pound it foul. So Lackey's gone away. He's come in. Griffey with 12 RBIs doesn't run as well as he used to. Lackey wants that ground ball. Ken is doing a great job of fouling off the two good pitches, hoping that John will make a mistake. Lackey only needs seven pitches to get out of the first. Good pitch efficiency in the second, now really getting up there in the third. He's able to get Johnson out, but then the next five batters reach. Two have scored. 27 in the third. This one will stay in play. Rivera going over. In foul territory makes the catch. Ichiro tags and comes home. And the throw is not in time. It's a three-nothing Seattle lead. A sacrifice fly by Junior. Pretty good throw by Juan Rivera, but it took the throw out of speedy Ichiro. So a third inning, three in the third. Taxing Big John a little bit with his pitch count. He'll be counting on his offense to pick him up here a little bit. He knows it's not over yet. Russell Brannion, who's been one of the real stars for Seattle offensively this year, steps up. 11 home runs and 23 RBIs. This guy has been playing baseball. This is his 16th pro season. Out off the left side. Strike one. And it seems like wherever he's gone, he has had an early opportunity to play every day, but he struck out a lot. Now he's getting an opportunity to play every day and he's hitting both right handers and left handers. See his numbers with Cincinnati and Cleveland. It's all about confidence at this level for especially a guy that's been around for a while been kind of a part time player. He's looking at this as like hey look I got a chance to become a regular here and I'm not going to lose my toe hole. Now 33 years old out of the state of Georgia pitches outside two and one. He's going to go to all parts of the field. His power comes from, you know, center field, mainly the right field, but he saw his base hit in his first at bat to left. John stays with the heater, up and in, three and one. He's gone past 30 pitches in this inning alone. 52 now for the ball game. Lopez waiting his turn on deck. Three and two. He's got that curveball that he has not shown, Russell Brannion. Likes to save it. Second, third time through the order, but right now he's got a determined Seattle Mariners with two on, two out. He's got his mind made up trying to get on the same page as Mike Napoli. Oh, he stays with the fastball and kept it down and strikes out Brannion. But John gives up three in the third. Bottom three we go. Mike Napoli will lead it off.
three runs off John Lackey in the third inning. Jason Vargas back on the hill. He has started so well for his new ball club Seattle started the year in the minors. First pitch swung on drilled to center field and Gutierrez right there with the basket catch for out number one. The Home Depot doing more on defense. That's why they call this the pitcher's best friend, man. I'll tell you, one pitch, two outs, that takes a lot of offenses out of the inning. Angels have turned a pair for John already. Both sides are doing more on defense. Home Depot. Howie Kendrick takes the first pitch fastball, strike one. Vargas has not allowed a hit. Next pitch is fouled off the right side, and Kendrick down in the count 0 and 2. Mike Napoli couldn't have hit it any harder. Looked like it was knuckling when it was coming at Franklin Gutierrez. Yeah, we had some sync to it for sure. It made, it made it difficult for Gutierrez on what it looked like a routine play, but believe me, being on the other end of that, that's a tough catch. Kids got some good talent. Try to jam Kendrick and the count moves to one and two. Howie down at 234 coming in. He is a career 360 hitter in the minors. And he swings at the changeup. Ground ball Beltre wings it to first base, throws him out, two gone in the third inning. The last start that Jason made, that was the start that everybody was talking about in Seattle. Randy Johnson, a big unit, was coming back to town. And Vargas outpitched him. Now they both went seven strong innings. Vargas, though, gave up just one run on two hits against San Francisco, one walk, and seven strikeouts. Spoiled Randy's homecoming. And, uh, victory number 299 in his career. There's Eric Ibar. But you know, the kid has given up four runs this year in his three starts. He has not given up a run to a base hit. Other than a solo home run, he's given up a, a run on an error and three solo home runs. That's it. A pretty nice job of setting the Angels down in order. Ibar, the number nine hitter. First time through. In there, two and one. That's Bruce Dreckman behind home plate umpire. Paul Immel at first base, Doug Miller at second, and Bill Hahn is the crew chief, chief at third base tonight. Beautiful night. A little bit cooler than normal. Fastball hit towards right. Foul. But you know, we're used to warm weather. There's usually a, out here in Southern California a June gloom. We're kind of, you know, it, it's tough. It's, you don't see the sun much in the morning. Then afternoon it pops out. But the sun never came out today. This is kind of a strange for Southern California. I thought the Mariners brought the weather from Seattle. It's raining down in Southern Orange County today. Fastball just barely misses. Wow. Man, I don't know where that was. Ibar, he dodged one there. But I like the way the, the fact that Vargas gets on the mound and throws it. Good tempo. Plus, his team provided him with a three run lead. Right back up the middle, and that is the first hit of the ball game. Vargas almost fought it off as it clipped off his glove. Angels have struck too sharply in this third inning. One was a line out by Napoli, now the base hit by Eric Ibar. Okay, three and two, you pretty much know something's coming that's going to be hittable. It stayed up. Ibar was able to just lace it to center. Biggins, like Ichiro Suzuki, nice little hitting streak going on now. Ichiro is now at 22 with that base hit he got off of John there in the third inning. And now for Figgy, he's still looking for number 16 here. Fastball in. That's a long hitting streak. I'll tell you, 16 games, 22 with each rows on. You know, yeah, you got to be doing a lot of things right, and you try not to let the media pressure you with off the field comments, things like that. Hey, can you keep it going today? You know, good there. pitch there. But each row, you were talking about Suzuki. He's recorded 30 hitting streaks of at least 10 games in his career and 16 streaks of at least 15 games. Well, you're going to see guys with speed have more hitting streaks because they can get the infield hits. 
That's up the middle. Clips off the glove, and they get it to second base in time. The Angels are done in the third inning. They do get their first base hit of the game. But Seattle has a one, not three, nothing lead. Zero, 1 and 0 time for Aflac trivia question and it is about Jason Vargas and Jared Weaver two of six active major leaguers who played for Long Beach State who are the other four we will give you the answer later in the ball game we told you that Jared was the number one gun for the dirt bags back in 2004 and Vargas number two now he's visiting with Rick Adair his pitching coach Rick really likes the kids makeup Lackey going back to work after he faced eight Mariners in the third inning and gave up three runs. Well, Vargas did exactly what Adair wanted him to. After your team scores you three runs, you want to go out and just keep the momentum on your side. Retired the Angels one, two, three. Kendrick getting Lopez one out. John wants one of those early count out innings because he threw 34 pitches in the third. Only seven in the first, 13 in the second, but 34 in their three run Mariner third inning. Here's Rob Johnson, grounded out his first time up. Very good defensive catcher last year at Tacoma. Made the big club out of spring training. Off of Lackey, he still has time. The throw. Just in time. Nice play by John after it was lined off of him. Look at, look, look at John. He's waving Rick Smith off, saying, hey, Smitty. Uh, now, see, Wakamatsu thinks that Morales pulled his foot off the base. That's first base umpire Paul Emmel. And Rick Smith, whenever a pitcher gets hit by the ball off the bat, come out and take a, take a check with him. But before Smith could even come out there, Lackey was saying, go back in the dugout. And that's kind of a pet peeve that, that uh, athletic trainers don't like to see. They don't like the player to say, get off the field. <laughs> Dave Norales looked like he stayed on. Wakamatsu was arguing that foot came off. I remember back in the late 90s when J.T. Snow was the first baseman. He was so good at stretching and then coming off a couple of times in his career, he would... He was called by umpires for coming off the bag too early on routine plays. JT's one of the best first basemen all time defensively. Sure was fun playing beside him at second. Foul balls would go up down the right field line, and I would look at him and he would look at me, and we'd compete to see who got to it. it got so much fun. You know, you love to play the game with passion. You like to compete with yourself, but get a chance to play with gold glovers like JT Snow, Andre Scalaraga, Don Mattingly. Uh, it was a, quite a treat for me. Andy Chavez hits it sharply past Kendrick into right field. So Chavez is two for two, and he has hit the Angels very well this year. And he really tore them up in the first series of the year. Hey, we're not
going to show you some Howard's Exmo. That's super slow motion. Howie Kendrick started his dive at the perfect time, just couldn't get to it. Chavez now 12 for 29 against the Angels this season. Gutierrez, the batter, lined an opposite field base hit to right field when John came up and in on him. Seattle beat Oakland on Wednesday 6 to 1. Eric Bedard got the win and Brannion hit his 11th home run of the year. But the Mariners have not won back to back games since April 24th and 25th. And that's when Wakamatsu's team was playing the Angels and knocked them off two straight. Angels would win the final game of that series. Runner goes. Throw by Mike Napoli. Not in time. A steal for Chavez. His seventh this year. Oh man, it's, it was a close one. Napoli wanted to throw him out, but I'll tell you what, what got it was Indy Chavez's late head first slide. When you start your slide late, it's going to get you there to the bag quicker. And if you start sooner, you slow down. See, he waited and had his ball of his momentum coming in there, and he got his hand. See that how he slid late? Real close. If he starts his slide about a foot sooner, Napoli gets it. Sliding is an interesting technique, and some people are good at it, and some aren't. You can always work on it and improve. But if you're a base sealer, a guy who knows the little nooks and crannies of the slides at the base going to the far corner uh, feet first pop up slides hook slides you're better off three and oh to Gutierrez John wants to be aggressive with him he just asked home plate umpire Bruce Drecken was that down because it sure looked like it caught a lot of the plate but then you can also break your belt with a very good slide yep it's okay belts can be replaced not bodies it's a pretty cheap belt. Oh, it's not, he's wearing the leather kind. I don't like the leather. That's in there. Good curve. Leather was a little heavier. I felt it slowed me down. I wanted the elastic one that was a lot lighter. That's all leather there. I just take it off. Give it to the equipment manager. Well, he will when he gets off the field. I'm talking about right now. He could call a timeout and say, I've got broken equipment. Let me take this off. But then, of course, you don't want your pants to fall down when you're rounded third and heading home. Well, usually baseball pants are pretty snug without the belt. Then no. take the belt off, like you said, excess weight. Yeah, I, I think he's comfortable. Or he would definitely take it off. Went right after him. Went right after Gutierrez. John doesn't want to face Ichiro with runners in scoring position. Suzuki waiting on deck. John has already thrown 67 pitches, not yet through the fourth. Got the first two outs quickly. Ground ball up the middle. Kendrick has it. His throw in time, inning over. Bottom four we go. The Angels will have Bobby Abreu, Vlad Guerrero, and Corey Hunter coming up.
three nothing, and that young man enjoying a birthday drink. That is Pioneer Junior High School in Tustin, Evan Kaplan. That's Evan celebrating his 13th birthday here at the yard. Way to go, Evan. Happy birthday, partner. Hope you bring him a win. Angels need to come back. They're trailing three nothing. Bobby Abreu shows bun against Vargas. Wednesday night's three one victory was the Angels 14th comeback win this year. Halo's just one and two on the six game homestand versus Chicago now Seattle. Tomorrow night Felix Hernandez against Matt Palmer Sunday Jakubowskis against Irvin Santana. A 2 0 count to a brave. He had that big hit on Wednesday when the Angels were trailing one nothing. Two on and he drove in two of the double. Over the head of a pretty good right fielder in Jermaine Dye. The fact that the Angels have never seen Vargas before sometimes is an advantage to Vargas and the pitchers. And then he's executing. Popped up. Left side should stay in play. Rob Johnson makes the catch. One out. He is allowed just one hit. Affleck trivia question. It's about Jason Vargas, who was the number two pitcher at Long Beach State. And Jared Weaver was number one back in 2004 when both were drafted. But who played for the Long Beach State third bags? The other four guys actively in the major leagues Jason Giambi, Jeremy Reed, Evan Longoria, and Troy Tulowitzki. Four pretty good major leaguers. Fastball runs inside. Bobby Crosby is the Long Beach State shortstop from years past. He's with the Oakland Athletics, but I'm not sure if he is on the uh, active roster. Maybe he was kind of knocked around. Vlad Guerrero goes to center field. The Angels with a lot of atom balls in this game, and that is the second out of the fourth inning. It's coming slowly but surely. Vladdy will get back and it'll click to him. He wants to, you know, just try to get some base hits and all stroke will come. But this is the big leagues, and it's a tough, tough league, and, and it's a timing game. So this is just his third game. Back 35 games. Ground ball. Beltre Vargas pitching like Randy Johnson one hit allowed in four innings. Nothing lead over the Angels. John Lackey back on the hill. Will face Ichiro Suzuki. 
Unieski Betancourt and Adrian Beltre time now for our Firestone leaderboard and Suzuki with a 22 game hit streak. He singled his last time up golfing a pitch to right field and driving in a run his 15th RBI this year. You know I'm sure he plays golf. I've never asked him. And you know you can carry on a conversation with each of now the fact that they added Ken Griffey Jr. A, a fun guy and a 20 year veteran. He's loosened each up a little bit. And you can you know he understands good English and he can speak broken English but does a good job. I'd like to ask him how his golf game is. The first expression he heard in English that he learned was was up dog. <laughs> foul back. Well, to the left side in foul territory is Sean Figgins. I beg your pardon. And Ichiro is the first out of the fifth inning. The second American expression he learned was chilling like a villain. <laughs> the uh, Seattle Mariners had a lot of fun with him when he was early in his career. 2001, he was not only the rookie of the year, he was the most valuable player of the year. And just had an amazing season. He has averaged 225 hits per year. Bentoncourt the batter. Ground ball third. Figgins has it. Two quick outs here in the fifth inning. And Rex, you and I wanted to say congratulations to the Orange Coast College Pirates 2009 Junior College State Champions. First title since 1980. Head coach John Altabelli. Oh, man. You know a little bit. Congratulations, all those guys, man. They won the California State. Junior college champs, man, they're good. They, what a year they had, you know. And plus, they had a, a, a really, really tough setback as well when their catcher Jordan Watanabe passed away earlier in the season. During the season, it was really tough for this team. So, congratulations as, as they defeated San Juan Delta in the title game last Monday, ten to seven. Way to go, Brett Wallach. Line drive, base hit, left center field. Beltre a hard around first base going for number two then puts the brakes on because Hunter would have thrown him out. Hendricks snapped that throw to first base but Beltre just barely back in time and he is slow in getting up. Second base hit on the night you know this guy's a, a longtime veteran he loves to play baseball numbers may not be great all the time but he took a big turnaround first base on a routine single Torrey would have had him by a mile. But you know you like that effort. Look at him. He's thinking to all the way. I like that kind of output and you're going to get that from somebody who respects the game like Beltre and loves to play it. Seventh hit of the night for Seattle. They've scored three runs. The Angels only with one base hit off Jason Vargas. The pitch popped up left field Juan Rivera. Makes the catch a quick comfortable fifth inning for John Lackey, but he needs some offense. The Angels hitting under 200 on his homestand.
Of John Lackey in the third inning. Now the Angels must come back against Jason Vargas. Mariners bullpen is very good, so you want to take the lead before you get to the later innings. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Vargas to Juan Rivera, ball one. Rivera reached in an error by the first baseman Russell Brandy, but he was quickly erased on a 4-6-3 double play that Kendry Morales hit into. 2 and 0. Oh. You know, usually when we've seen the Angels not with a lot of production the first couple times through the order, all it takes is one igniter, one guy to get something going. And then they have a, usually a frenzy style that follows. Well, they need to put together a frenzy here to come back on the Mariners. Seattle came in at 22 and 26, six games back of Texas, third place in the West. The Angels after a five and five road trip. Having a tough time at home swinging the bats. That ball rolled pretty well deep left center field and see you later. Home run Juan Rivera number five this year and four have come against the Mariners. You need ignition. You need a spark. There it is. Let's see if the Angels can follow with some more frenzy type hitting. Now that's not exactly a darker. That ball was a liner. Good hang a week's worth of laundry on that baby. Fifth home run all off southpaws for Juan Rivera this year. Look at this. Takes his time. Second time through the order. Juan got one he liked. And you know how you can tell he liked it? He had a small hop. Well, after he hits it, he knows he's got it gone. A little small hop kind of just lets you know that right, that felt good. That's out of here. So Vargas has given up five total runs this year, four earned. One scored on an error, the other four on solo home runs. Ground ball, Beltre, flat footed, throws him out, one down. So the Angels on the scoreboard as Rivera goes deep. Have not been a power hitting team this year. They're second to last in home runs. That was their 38th of the year. And they're facing Jason Vargas for the first time ever. And that's the second right hander to take him deep this year. It's a tough game. You stay around long enough, you'll, you'll get your humble pie. You'll take your lumps. But you're hoping you can stay on top more often. Mike Napoli lined out his first time up, goes after the first pitch and sends it foul strike one. Rex tomorrow is the second annual Big Brothers Big Sisters Doorways event. 100 locations throughout Orange County reaching over 100,000 people. And one of those doorways hosted by an on-site big and little match will be at Angel Stadium. And it's by the Panda Express along the first base side where you and I dine quite a bit. There will be Big Brother and Big Sisters sharing their stories and encouraging others to join the program. Remember Big Brothers and Big Sisters is one of the oldest mentoring organizations in the U.S. They are in need of male volunteers at this time. So check it out tomorrow during the Angels game with Seattle. That's right. Hey, young college students that are home for the summer, come on out. They could use your leadership. Mike Chase is one. That's a changeup. The Napoli is looking to get on track. He's been down for about two weeks now. Hasn't really had a lot of production going on. His average has slipped from the low 300s to the 280s now. And but he is third in the American League versus left-handed batters. I mean left-handed pitchers a 435 average. So Mickey Hatcher has been trying to keep him short, but not this time. We struck him out. Why don't we visit Jack in the box outside of the box? Of course, Jack's always in. Free swingers. Let's check him out. Vladdy, first time up tonight. That ball's in. Way inside. He still can square those up. How about Ichiro Suzuki? Bad ball. Look at Napoli. He was ready to block that with a runner at third base. Golfed it in for an RBI single. That got them on the board. Don't, the ball doesn't have to be down the middle for some guys. It is like the hack. Most those two guys are premium players in our game. Juan Rivera squared that one up as good as you can. Vargas backs off. Kendrick count is one and one. And that's something that Vargas in his three starts has done well. Pitched inside effectively. 
comes back inside enough that Howie can't do much with it. And Howie has a tremendous ability of scoring up the baseball, but he's just been missing lately. It will happen for this young man, so talented. Try to jam him. He checks his swing. They say it caught the zone. Well, it's a 2 2 count, two balls, two strikes. Because Howie hasn't had a, a lot of early success this season. The pitchers there kind of think they got a hole, found a hole in the swing. That's the second time he's thrown him a changeup and got him to ground out to the third baseman, Beltre. Angels score a run on the home run by Rivera, but through five, it's a 3 1 Seattle lead. See a little hop? Got it. Time for the Coors Light Breeze Cam, and it's about where Ichiro golfed that baseball to right field, drove in a run, amazing hitter. And this is a guy who now has a 22 big hit streak. Coors Light Breeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. We head to the sixth inning, John Lackey to face Russell Brannion, who is singled and struck out swinging. Seattle scored all three runs off John after he threw 34 pitches in the third. Faced eight batters, gave up four hits. Brannion was the final out with two on. Shows bunt, brings it back. Figgins was well back at third and about 20, maybe even 25 feet off of the line at third base. John attacked him up and in with fastballs and then threw him a hook here, but in that last at bat, he came inside consistently. I think they're trying to find a hole in his swing as well. And when a guy, big guy like that squares around a bunt, you want it to happen. You say, go ahead, take the bunt. There he is. You know, he's been kind of reaching out and punching that ball to left field. And John says, hey, that inside corner is my part of the plate. Texas beat Oakland today, 6 to 3 in game one of the doubleheader. And they've just gone final in game two. Rangers sweep. They take the Athletics 5 to 2. Another one up and in. The count's full 3 and 2. So the. Rangers have gained a game and a half on the Angels. Full game right now. But if the Angels lose, it would be a game and a half. And when it's whistled to right field. Man, it's amazing what he has done this year. And he's going for two. Throw by Bobby Abreu. Not in time. A leadoff double for Branya. It's his 12th double that leads the Mariners. I told him before the game, I've been calling him Paul Bunyan Branya. He laughed. Says I've heard a lot worse. <laughs> but that's a curveball that hung up there about belt high. When you're hot, you're going good. Anything out over, especially with two strikes, going to get hit. He is just a career 230 hitter in the major leagues, and he's played a long time. I mean, this is his ninth big league season. But hitting over 315 now is Seattle. Bunt try. Lackey will go to first base as the sacrifice is executed by Lopez. Seattle will sacrifice a lot. As a matter of fact, they've done it more 
than any other major league teams. That's their 23rd. Let's check the buy.com American League West standings. The Rangers winning a doubleheader, so they're now four up on the Angels. Rangers 10 over 500. If they continue to get good pitching, and obviously they did today with Tommy Hunter and Scott Feldman, they're going to be tough to beat. I would agree with you because they have a they have the best offense in the American League West. Ball one might be in all of baseball. Well, the New York Yankees might argue with you on that one. They're playing great baseball right now. Always the Rangers have been able to slug. This year seems like their pitching is coming through for them. Two balls, no strikes. Okay, Rob Johnson's back in there now with Kenji Jojima going out on the disabled list with a little muscle problem again. He's going to get most of the reps. He's a younger player. Brings a lot of energy to the team. Angels infield in. Three and oh. I don't think John wants to face Andy Chavez. He's waiting on deck and he is two for two. And he'd be a tough guy to double with his speed batting from the left side. It was right after Johnson and Rob taking all the way three and one. I think John would tell you, maybe Mike Butcher could tell you a little bit more that. His command isn't exactly where he wants it to be at this particular time of the season. It's kind of new coming in. League's hitting 304 off of him. That's a high number for John. Just missing low and outside. Lackey wanted that one. And he is asking the home plate umpire, was it down? And he said, yes. And John <laughs> argues, so does Mike Sosha. First and third situation. Hey John, not very happy. It looks like I was right on the outside corner. I think home plate umpire Bruce Dreckman when Blackie's motion with his glove was that away? Dreckman shook his head, says yes. So he has thrown 88 pitches tonight. Walked two. Almost intentionally walked Bentoncourt back in the third, but not this time with Johnson. Chavez two for two. And he lines it towards left, but it stays up for Juan Rivera. The runner will go. Here's the throw by Juan. Not in time. Seattle goes back in front by three as Branyan scores in the sacrifice fly. Nice job by Branyan challenging Juan Rivera. The reason that Bruce Hines, the third base coach, sent him is because that ball took Juan Rivera to a knee. So he wasn't in great throwing position. But one has got a great throwing arm just overthrew it just a hair. Brandon back. See one was down. He got to his feet. He throws it a little lower. Napoli would have blocked him out. See that there's another late slide. That's what you want to do if the catcher's going to stick his shin guard out there. Exmo shows you. Dreckman made the correct call. If the sacrifice works for Seattle, it pays off. If the sacrifice fly, that makes it a four to one ball game. And here is Gutierrez who Skies it in the air. Right side. Abreu at the track pulls it down, inning over, but one more for Seattle. John knows he's getting awfully close to that Seattle pen.
AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Seattle taking a page out of the Angels playbook with a lot of sacrifices, good base running, advancing runners, and scoring the runs. They've done the little things, and they have four runs on eight hits, one error. The Angels with one run on only two hits and no errors. The Angels hitting under 200 on this homestand. First against Chicago, now against Seattle. Eric Ibar will lead it off. Single his first time up. Has an 0-2 count as Vargas command has been outstanding tonight. He comes inside again. See, when you pitch inside to right-handers and Sosha's got all righties in there except for Abreu. Opens up the outside part of the plate for his changeup, and that's been his out pitch to righties. Pitching inside effectively. Ground ball third. A lot of that has happened because Vargas has been able to hit that outside corner right around the knees. And Miguel Batista warming up for Seattle. And you go, why? Because Vargas has only thrown 66 pitches. And Rex has only allowed two hits. Come on. Yeah, hey, look. Maybe the Angels would fare better with a, another arm in there. But I thought Juan Rivera's leadoff home run last inning in the fifth was going to ignite him. Vargas came right back, kept him off balance with some ground balls and strikeout. Sean Figgins, ball one. Figgins trying to stretch his hit streak to 16 consecutive games has popped up and grounded out. 0 for 2. Angels need to get something started against this kid. His command has been outstanding and he throws another strike. He has not walked an Angel. Gave up a solo home run to Juan Rivera in the fifth inning and that's pretty much been it. Great command working that outside corner and the Angels right handed batters have been chasing his changeup. It doesn't really look like it's finishing in that strike zone because of the inside pitch he's setting them up with. Biggins was looking for a changeup to push bunt there. And inside and then he goes back out with a changeup and see these lefties that aren't overpowering. They they know they can't make any mistakes out over the plate like he did to Juan Rivera. So he's going to dissect. The inside and outside parts of the plate. Made a mistake there. Walked his first batter, Sean Figgins, with one out in the sixth inning. Hey, fans, the Angels have a great ticket special for tomorrow and Sunday's games against Seattle. Tickets are still available for just $10 in the entire 500 view level. Use the password fastball at the Angel Stadium ticket window or angelsbaseball.com to purchase your tickets for this weekend's games. And granted, fans, the Angels have not hit their gear yet, put all, everything together. You can't just go, well, they got Lackey Santana back, so just put her in drive and go. No, no, no. It takes all three elements. And they have to play together to find that consistency. The Angels really hit their stride in the second half and pulled away from the pack. And uh, absolutely blew apart Seattle, winning the West by 39 games over the Mariners. Abreu tries to bunt, pulls it back, and takes ball two. Bobby with a keen eye. Hey, Vargas, he does a pretty good job fielding his position on the routine play in bunts, but he's not quick to the plate. Overall, he'll attempt to mix up a slide step, but sometimes when he does that, it'll affect his command. And this move to first base is not that good. It's average. There you go. When he was at LSU, he was a pitcher slash first baseman. He does have those infield skills. Angels haven't done much against Jason Vargas tonight. Six foot lefty out of Apple Valley, California. Again, trying to keep Figgins close. Rob Johnson, very good catch and throw guy. What about Fargus's times home? What have you noticed tonight? And he's 1.4 to 1.5. So that's uh, stealable. Especially if could be anything over 1.3 by the time he breaks his hands and gets it to the catcher's glove is doable. That's lined to the second baseman. Are you kidding me? The Angels hitting the ball in the screws, but right at Seattle's infielders. We head to the seventh inning. 4 1 M.
John Lackey back to work against Ichiro Suzuki, who is one for three with an RBI and a run score. John has allowed three runs in the third and one in the sixth, which comes up and in. Four runs on eight hits for Seattle, one run on two hits for the Angels. Ground ball up the middle, that's a base hit. Better and watch Suzuki out. on. He's going for two. Easily. Wow. Ball, even though it wouldn't hit all that hard. Ball that gets by a second baseman or a shortstop with his kind of speed, he's looking for two and he's cruising. And the Another way lead off double. Okay. Kind of has a little pigeon toed approach to keep his weight back, but look at him. He takes a little turn, that little question mark type turn, hitting the inside part of the base, and that's just easy. That's not even full speed. He was gliding. And I would be surprised if they sacrifice here. No, they're going to swing away. They sacrificed after Brannion had doubled in the sixth inning. And Lopez sacrificed in the third. They walked Rob Johnson, but Chavez hit his sacrifice fly. So Don Wakamatsu knows he has power arms in that bullpen that have really stopped the opposition from coming back this year. I really think that's been the strength of the team is their bullpen. They've got four guys who are like 95 to 97 miles an hour. Jason Bolger is now warming up for the Angels in the seventh. Another hard throw will go to Mar for Seattle. I'm not sure what Sean Figgins uh, notices. It's, it's a light or somebody's got a camera. They're taking pictures. It's a flash, and you know that's a pretty dangerous uh, thing. So Sean Figgins came in, says, "Hey, uh, Bruce, home plate umpire, somebody's got a light shining or taking pictures. Please tell them to stop." Uh oh, put it away. She's going to get one of those NIs on her report card. Needs improvement. Well, must listen. We're not exactly sure she's the one, but as she takes a picture, let's see if a light flashes because that's apparently what's bothering Figgy. See, Betancourt now down with two strikes. He'll try to punch that ball to the right side. And that's the reason he hits in the second spot. Ibar says, My foot was on the base and he touched my foot. I tagged him. He wasn't on the bag. Nice attempt to pick him off. Okay, let's see. Ibar, his foot's on the base, and no, he, Ibar's foot lifted up, and he threw, got it in. Trying to get Bentoncourt to chase on the breaking ball in the dirt. The count moves to two balls and two strikes. This guy's tough to strike out, but he is a free swinger. Doesn't walk very much. Only seven walks this year. So he's sitting with Bruce Hines, who is a longtime member of the Angels organization in the minor leagues, and now the third base coach with Seattle. Oh, she's got problems. You've been on the phone, and you have been had. He gets the bunt down with two strikes. Lackey will tag him out, and Ichiro moves to third. You think Wakamatsu has confidence in that young man's ability to bunt? That's why he's hitting second. He's got good skills. And with two strikes, Lackey gave him one up, which would made it easy for him to focus on getting it down. It's the little things you do, whether there's no strikes or two strikes, it brings you the love in the dugout. The 24th sacrifice bunt by Seattle this year, most in the American League. So Lackey's got to bring that infield in. Beltray, the batter, last time the Mariners had a man at third base. They had the bases loaded. Beltray chopped one at the plate, rolled it towards third, infield hit, and an RBI. He is two for three, singled his last time up. So Vargas out pitching a couple of really good pitches in his last two starts. Randy Johnson last week. And John Lackey tonight. Beltre two for three. He's got a little something going on. He wants to just stay right where he's been hitting it, up the middle.
Angels really solved the Mariners last year winning 14 of the 19 meetings but not this year. It's been really tough with Seattle. They're five and five. Ichiro at third base. The one one. He continues to work him away. And it's Beltre who wants the appeal from the first base umpire and doesn't get the call. It's this guy has fun playing baseball. That is a beautiful thing. I don't see any other hitters in the American League that point to the umpire and say, hey, check me. <laughs> it's usually the catcher, but Beltre, as soon as he checked the swing, oh, I'm, I'm on an appeal. Did I go? Well, he went that time, and uh, John Lackey strikes him out. Big K here in the seventh inning with Seattle leading four to one. Yeah, it was. He buzzed his tower a little bit there with a high fastball. Beltre knew one was coming, but didn't expect it there. Lackey trying to move through seven. He's now at 101 pitches, 65 in the zone, 36 have missed. He's walked just a couple in the ball game. And Junior's up again. 0 for 2. And Kent sends one high in the air and to left field. Juan Rivera will make the catch. The inning is over. So he does not let Ichiro score from third base with one out. Bottom seven. That young lady's in trouble. She was not the culprit that Bruce Dreckman home plate umpire was after. She was simply taking a picture, no flashes, but because she was available, we took a shot of her taking pictures of these baseball players. She's having fun at the yard at the big game with all the other 40,000 people. Happy she's here. Big Daddy, let's see if he can cork one out of here for her as she tries to get his picture in mid swing. She better hope that a fall ball's not coming her way. Well, Vlad Guerrero rips it foul. He has hit the ball in the screw several times in the last couple of games, but it's been lining out. And he has been squaring it up rather than getting the back underside. Watch how he pulls his hands in. Pulls his hands in. He's able to hit that ball three or four inches inside. She wanted that one to fall for Big Daddy. Upstairs, two and one. Do you know who Jason Vargas's uncle is? Uncle Randy. Randy Velarde. He, really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. How about that? I didn't know that. Former Angels infielder Randy Velarde is Jason Vargas's uncle. Vargas has a 2 2 count with the Angels slugger Vladimir Guerrero. Popped him up. Man, his pitch location has been marvelous tonight. Just enough in where Vladimir couldn't do very much with it. 
And he pops him up to third. So Jason Vargas, where was he on opening day? Time for Lexus is pursuing perfection, and he's been near it. I'm telling you, he's been pitching inside very well, and then working with the only lefty Abreu away there. And has the Angels hit an Adam bombs? Adam balls with whenever they do make contact. Change ups away has been his pitch. Lexus pursuing perfection. Vargas pretty close to it, just allowing two hits to the Angels here in the bottom of the seventh. And they need this young man because they have so many pitchers on the disabled list, including two starters, Carlos Silva and Ryan Roland Smith on the DL. Then they have relievers Roy Corcoran, Sean Kelly, Brian Fairbin, Cesar Jimenez. With this guy pitching the way Matt Palmer has pitched for the Angels this year. Palmer 5 and 0. Vargas 1 and 0 this year in his five games, three starts. Foul. He's walked one. That was Sean Figgins back in the sixth inning. But he has not allowed many base runners. Only two hits by the Angels, a single by Ibar, and a home run by Rivera. Another base runner reached on an error, and he was erased on a 4 6 3 double play. The Angels also walked, but that was erased on a line out by Bobby Abreu. Who scalded the baseball to the second baseman and they doubled up Figgins. Change of misses and a ball four. So the Angels want to jump on this opportunity on the second walk by Vargas. Fans, family Sundays at Angel Stadium are the perfect way to spend time with your family on the weekend. The next family Sunday takes place this Sunday, May 31st, as the Angels host these ends. Tickets for this game are still available for $10 in the entire 500 view level when using the password fastball at the Angel Stadium ticket window or angelsbaseball.com. She's saying, come on, Dad, they're only $10. 500 view level anywhere. Bring me back. Oh, she's sad now because, it, honey, we've got a father-daughter breakfast, and then we're going to spend the rest of the day together. Trying to get things fired up here in the seventh. Angels have a man on with one out. And Juan Rivera, who's been on twice, reached on the air and then hit one out. Angels have hit into two double plays. They've only had four base runners. Outside. I think he might be a, a little more careful with Juan here. Yeah, he's trying to get Juan to swing at that off speed pitch away. And Rivera hasn't bid on it. Then he came back with a fastball. Ooh. Good pass there. Very good and fouled off. Two balls and one strike. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hubbard with you tonight at the Big A. Game one of a three game series. Angels and Seattle. Mariners scored three times in the third, one in the sixth. The Angels have one run in the fifth. It was courtesy of Juan Rivera. Lou, three and one. That was the fifth inning shot, and it was a long distance smash into the rock pile. Hit the rock pile so hard it forced an explosion out there. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, they're getting ready for that Friday night fireworks extravaganza. It's a beautiful show. Ball fouled off. Three and two. Vargas not giving in. He has thrown several changeups on three two counts tonight, and the Angels have bitten on those. I would expect one to stay off the plate here for sure. But he might try to jam him inside with something. Hunter, we'll see if he goes. Torrey does not, and the pitch is swung on. Hit up the middle. Base hit for Rivera. Hunter stops at second base, so the tying run will be coming to the plate in Kendry Morales. Good, solid contact there. He went with the fastball. That ball was hit back up the middle at 108 miles an hour. See, how do I know that? It's because we have a radar gun. And this and the uh, the time and the velocity showing up to the media here and whenever the ball goes back 
the radar picks that up as well as coming in and it was 108. I was saying man that's pretty good that you were able to gauge that. The Angels have a man in scoring position for the first time tonight and remember Vargas has not allowed a run this year on a base hit. He has only allowed a run on an error and four solo home runs. Hey yeah, stick around the game long enough. That'll change. <laughs> no question. That's one thing you can count on in life change. Strike one. Good change again. For strike one. Morales has yet to fork a homer from the right side of the plate. He says his, his strongest side for homers. All eight home runs have come from the left side. Sure could use a lift here to tie this one up. John Lackey would love it. Twice he's hit the ball on the ground. That's high. They throw to first. Safe. Barely getting back is Juan Rivera. Nice play by Rob Johnson. Oh, that would have been a huge out. Rivera got a little far off, but Branion, with his lack of playing first base a lot in his career, wasn't able to find him to put the tag on it in time. So Juan was able to get back there. And Rob Johnson says, oh, man, I thought we had it. It's tougher for a right-hander. At first base to bring that tag all the way around. A left hander just goes bang bang. His gloves on the other side of the it's a little easier. That one didn't miss by much. He's not controlling the count as he did in the first six innings. The Angels have Darren Oliver warming in the pen. Lackey is evening likely over after seven innings and allowing four runs. The Angels only have three hits tonight, two singles and a home run. In there, two and two. Mm. Waiting, Mike Napoli. Mike trying to come inside and finish him with a change. Just depends, but he's putting the ball where he wants it. That's for sure. Line drive, base hit in the gap. This will score Hunter. Racing to third as Rivera makes it safely. The Angels have cut Seattle's lead in half. A nice opposite field piece of hitting by Morales. Let the ball get deep towards the catcher's glove. And put a level swing on it. There's your first base hit given up with an RBI out there. That's located where he wanted it. He's out of the middle. Morales just stuck his hands out there, went with it. Juan Bamazzi now making the walk to the mound. I thought he might bring on a right-hander to face Napoli. Napoli's been great against lefties, and they will make the move here. In the seventh inning, the Angels have the tying runs on. Hunter just came home to make it a 4-2 ball game, so we'll take a break as well. The Angels coming back on the end. Ford Advantage Plank. 
and by Jack in the Box, where you can get anything on the menu any time of the day. Here at the Big A, a marvelous crowd on hand as the Angels try to come back on Seattle. They've got runners on the corners, just one out in the seventh inning. It scored a run, and now a new pitcher comes out of that Mariner bullpen. It's Sean White, 28 year old right hander, born in Pullman, raised in Mercer Island, grew up a Mariners fan, and he has been outstanding recently. Ooh, no runs allowed his last nine games. Right. Hard thrower with a slider, mid 90s. He is not a strikeout pitcher, but he's a ground ball pitcher, and that's what they want a ground ball to get the inning ending double play. First and third, Rivera average speed at third, same at first base with Morales. All Napoli wants is a three run homer. <laughs> not much. Down low. The White has also walked 12 and 23 and two thirds this year. He has more walks than strikeouts. And yet has a 1.9 ELA. So right here, Napoli's looking to change the game. He can't be looking for a walk. Good, good hitting count. He's got to be looking for a fastball in. Stay inside the ball and shoot the ball. He's got good opposite field pop. Morales back in time. That's one of those rare fake to third throw to first moves. That's close. Vargas line right now. Two runs allowed and six and a third. But the two on base belong to him. He can't lose it. Popped him up. Right side. Brannion with the catch, and that's a big out because Rivera, if it's deep enough, he could score the run to pull the Angels to within one. But now the Angels need a base hit to bring Rivera home. Okay. Vargas is one of Sean White's best friends right now and biggest fans. And all right, that's going to work for me. Holding his breath as Brandon dropped the pop up earlier. Says, Man, we got to glove that. Well, Kendrick is due. And he knocks it foul. That's another pitch he can handle, but it's fouled off. That's three in the ball game that Howie usually squares up, but he's been fouling back. And then all of a sudden he gets in pitchers counts and they throw in that break or change of the way. He'll come out of it too good a hitter. Again fouled off and that's the third straight at back that Kendrick has been 0 2. And you know he's this month of May hasn't been too kind to have. He just hitting 208. In the month of May. Can't wait it could help turn him for him here with an 0-2 base hit. Now I mentioned the slider is his outfit white to righties. See if he goes with it. After showing him something upstairs, you can see Rob Johnson wanted it above the letters. It's a setup pitch. Two outs. First and third. Angels have Rivera at third base. Kendry Morales at first base. Two out now. Run home. Angels have been searching for a clutch hit tonight. They got one from Kendry Morales. Now they need one from Howie Kendry. Right field. Ichiro can't make the play. It rests in foul territory and they'll try it again. With one ball and two strikes. Okay, he was playing Howie shallow and right, and a little bit over towards the right field line. Center fielder Gutierrez, he's playing in the right center field gap a little bit. I know how he likes to hit the ball that way. Angel started the inning when Vlad Guerrero popped up. Torrey Hunter walked. Juan Rivera singled. Henry Morales singled. And Napoli popped up. One run home. One two. It gets away. Rivera will not go, but Morales does go to second base. Now a single can tie the game. A good job by Johnson. Wow, pitch that runner home from third. Young catcher. Wakamatsu, a catcher in his playing days at Arizona State. Kendrick must recognize that first base is open. They don't have to throw him a pitch. 
And they don't throw him one in that strike zone. The count is full three and two. Waiting on deck, Eric Ibar. Fouled it off. Howie 273 average with runners in scoring position. That's not bad. Here is the eighth pitch in this at bat between Sean White and Howard Kendrick. He strikes him out. So the Angels score one in the seventh, but leave it there. And at the end of seven, it's 4 2 Mariners. Back for the eighth inning, but he has allowed four runs, including three in the third inning. Jason Vargas has just pitched better. The Angels now down to the Seattle bullpen to try and come back on. Here is Branyan with a drive to left, and Rivera's back. He leaps. Did he catch it? Yes, he did. What a catch by Juan Rivera. Wow, Branyan thought he had an opposite field homer until Juan Rivera decided to climb the wall. Torrey Hunter says, hey, look, it's about time someone else did it. Jumped up on the wall, snow cone to the end of his glove. Great timing. That was a beauty. They just showed it on the big scoreboard, and the fans went crazy again. Excellent play by Juan Rivera. Branyan, he thought he had his 12th home run. Another example of this game of inches. Russell Branyan reacts. Oh man, I was robbed. But then his teammate Torrey Hunter says, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> In the left field and deep. Can Rivera this take this one away? Not this time. A home run by Jose Lopez, making it five to two. Yeah, I can tell that ball was hit just a little bit better. And how about Juan Rivera? He says, "All right, let's just stay hot." He tried it again. Back-to-back -back batters. That'll be Lopez's fourth. Hey, that's a belt high fastball. Mike Sosha is going to take John out. Yes, leaving it up there just a little. Juan Rivera again says, I'm going to try it. Oh, he says. Well, Lackey went seven and a third. Gives up five runs, all earned. 
and is trailing the Mariners five to two. We'll be right back. With you, top of the eighth inning, Seattle with a 5 2 lead in game one of this three game series. Juan Rivera showing the outfielders how he made that tremendous catch, robbing Russell Brannion of a home run. Oh, look at that. A precious moment here at the ballpark. Be another big leaguer. Rob Johnson, the batter. First pitch swing, ground ball, Eric Ibar throws him out. Two gone in the eighth inning. Jason Bolger pitching very well this year and has lowered that ERA to 5.60. I say very well because he had an enormous ERA in the month of April and he has allowed just one run in his last 11 innings now, if you include that last out. John Lackey's line, five runs, seven innings, two walks, two strikeouts. He was hurt by a big three run third inning. Long gone ball got him here in the eighth. Bolger's going to use that low to mid 90s fastball, and the curveball is his, one of his out pitches. Like you said, been doing very, very good. And just, just consistent going out throwing strikes. That's what they want from the guys in the pen. Andy Chavez has had a terrific game. Swings and misses at the changeup, and it's 0 and 2. But Chavez with a single, a run scored, a single, a stolen base, and a sacrifice fly. Well, there's an occasional changeup there. We don't see very often from Bolger. It was effective. And then he blows him away with a 93 mile an hour fastball. Good job by Jason. Bottom eight we go. Ibar, Figgins, Abreu coming up.
Larry Hunter Club because Hunter has robbed approximately 35 home runs in his big league career. Did one earlier this year in the ninth inning to win the ball game for the Angels. That would have tied it. Tonight, Juan Rivera goes over the wall to rob the Seattle Mariner, Russell Brandon. Angels good defense. The problem this week has been their offense. They have scored just 10 runs in four games on this homestand. Juan Rivera, though he's done his job, he's two for three with a single and a home run. Here's Eric Ibar against Mark Lowe, the new pitcher, and this guy can really bring it. You just saw that fastball touch 96 miles an hour. Yeah, you're, you're going a little higher. Fastball slider mainly. He's got occasional changeup. Oh, those two pitches, that's all he needs. As a 4.94 ERA, he's been their eighth inning guy recently. David Arjma for the ninth. There is his strike, a 1 1 count. Low out of Houston, Texas, the Mariners' fifth round pick in 2004. The, the University of Texas, Arlington. Lined to the first baseman, Branyan. How many lineouts have we seen the Angels hit this week? A ton of them. Not going good with the luck. Brannion playing him in in case of a bunt. Nybar would have had himself a sure double, maybe more. That's the fourth line out in this game. Brannion says, all right, I can do that. Brannion got robbed of his, would have been his 12th home run in that last inning. He says, I'm going to do my best to rob somebody. If the Angels lose this ball game, they'll be four and a half games out of first place. Plenty of time to go. Four months left in the season. Mike Sosha, he says he does not look at standings at any point in the season. Just play the game of baseball. Every single game matters. 0-1. Figging swings and misses. You know, you hear these guys say, you know, I really like the fastball. I remember Sparky Anderson's line when it see a guy who throws 97, 98 miles an hour. And he'd say, I like ice cream too, but I don't like a whole gallon of it. That's right. You better get ready for it because this guy and the next one, Arts McCummon, can bring it. Big time fastball and a pretty good breaking ball as well. Side and high. He can be a little bit wild. Just one week ago against San Francisco, lost his second game of the year and allowed five runs and all five with two outs, and a lot of it was because he got wild. He could not command that overpowering fastball. The 2 2. Lifted foul back to the screen. It will stay two balls and two strikes. Here the Colorado Rockies today fired Clint Hurdle after an 18 and 28 start. Jim Tracy, former Dodgers manager, takes over, who was the bench coach to run Colorado. Hitting streak on the line for Sean Figgins. 15 gamer. Oh yeah. Outside three and two. Sean wants to just get on base. Any way possible. Then the tying run would come to the plate in Abreu. Oh, excuse me, after the home run, it's a, a three run lead. I'm still at four to two, so I beg your pardon. They need to get two guys on to bring the tying run to the plate. Line to Branyan. Wow. I mean, there's a lot of space out there, HUD. How are they hitting it straight up wherever the Mariners are? Nobody can explain it. I call it stupid hit. <laughs> Guy's been playing there for over 100 years. Five lineouts in this ball game. All a hitter can do is hit it hard. It's Adam. Try to hang with him. That's all. Keep your head up. Shake your head. Whatever you got to do. Don't have to say anything to the other hit to your hitters in there. They all know. Sean was talking about that on our pregame show earlier this week. You got to be patient in this game. Sometimes you hit it right at him. Eventually, if you've got good swings and you hit line drives, it'll find space. So then hitters will tell you, 
when they doink them in there and get the ugly cheap hits that they all even out but there's some other hitters that don't believe that nope Bobby Abreu he is over three with a strikeout looking against Jason Vargas has also popped up and lined into an inning ending 4 three double play two out nobody on angels trailing by three we're in the eighth inning. Tomorrow it'll be right hander Felix Hernandez throwing for Seattle against Matt Palmer. Felix has been up and down this year, but still has tremendous stuff in his five and three overall this year. The Angels get five and zero oh, Matt Palmer. And, and Sunday, instead of Jakubowskis, it's going to be Garrett Olson against Irvin Santana. Low. Got him on strikes with the good breaking ball. Inning is over. To the ninth we go. Five to two Mariners. Angel fans looking for something unique this Father's Day? Well, how do Angel tickets and an opportunity to play catch with your dad on the field sound? All you have to do is enter the ultimate Father's Day experience at Angel Stadium, courtesy of the Stanley Works official tools of Angels Baseball. Enter at Canal Lumber Stores by June 12th. No purchases necessary. And dad happy this year. Bring him to the ballpark. Justin Spire pitching in his 16th game has a 589 earned run average. He will face the bottom of the order, Franklin Gutierrez to start things, and then Ichiro Suzuki and Unieski Betancourt. Gutierrez singled in that three run third inning and came around to score the second of their runs, has grounded out, flied out since. Mariners four and four since May 20th. The reason they're pitching. They have a 2.38 earned run average coming into this ball game. That was the lowest in the major leagues. So the Angels have to somehow continue to square up that baseball and not hit it at a defender. Five lineouts tonight. Breaking ball. Misses down low. One ball, one strike. Spire going to work that little slider, sinker down and the split finger. There's a slider there away. Bolger did his job. Came in, looked really, really well. Got the entire two guys. Took it over for John Lackey. A 3 1 count to Gutierrez. Ground ball foul. It's full 3 and 2. 
Waiting on deck, Ichiro Suzuki, who is two for four, has a 22 game hit streak. By the way, fans, you should check out angelsbaseball.com. It's a great opportunity to vote for your favorite angels and send them to the All Star game. Popped him up, right side. Howie Kendrick makes the catch, one out. And there have been some changes for the times of that Dodgers series here at the Big A coming up in the end of June. Friday, June 19th, the start time of the game will be 7 o'clock on FS West. There will be a pregame show at 6.30. On Saturday, June 20th, on my 13th, at 6 o'clock. And then Sunday night, June 21st at 5 p.m. So that has been changed from a 1 o'clock or a 12.30 start on Sunday to 5 p.m. So mark those in your calendar. Spire gets a first pitch swinging Ichiro to pop it up. But Ichiro likely will be going to the All Star game. He's batting 343, but fans, you've got to vote in a guy like Torrey Hunter. He's having a great year for the Angels. Or a guy like Sean Figgins. Now, obviously, you'll want to see that manager vote for guys like Joe Saunders or Jared Weaver who are having fine years. Hunter makes the catch for out number two. Rex, sometimes we in Southern California show our support by coming to the ballpark, and we've got another great crowd tonight 38,492 fans. But you'd love to see him go online, and it's an easy way of voting for your favorite angel. That's right. We'd like to get all those angels in there that are worthy. By the way, I was proud that Joe Torre, Dodger skipper, said today that he says Manny Ramirez should not be in the All Star game this year. He said, quote, Manny's popularity is getting him votes, but it showed should go to the best players having a great first half. I agree. Yep. I think it's proper. David Arjma is warming up in the Seattle bullpen. He's ready. He's become their closer. Last year it was J.J. Puts. And a ball back to the screen thrown by Justin. But Arjma came over in a really uneventful deal. There weren't, wasn't too much talk about it from the Boston Red Sox. But this guy has been a lifesaver with six saves and a 1-1-9 ERA for Don Wakamatsu. That's laced to left field for a base hit. Bullpen hasn't been a problem for Wakamatsu. He's been scoring runs, but not tonight. Okay, Spire. He's got a split finger. Sometimes he has a hard time controlling it. That's a actually that right there is a little bit of a slider. This is the last pitch, but he's been missing a little bit wildly with that split finger. That's a field pitch. Usually his strikeout pitch, but that slider was out over the middle. Justin did something the other day that I think every single ball player is proud of him. He went over by himself to Children's Hospital to visit the kids. Yep, he does that. He's a single guy, too. He's got a big heart. Hit sharply. Figgins backhand. Long throw. Got him. What a play by Figgy. One third baseman retires another. Figgins has got a strong arm. That looks good. Man, we got to show that to you again. Didn't have to get too dirty. Right over the top. Easy play.
use that splitty mainly against lefties. He was acquired in a trade with Boston for Fabian Williamson, a left-handed pitcher in the minor leagues in January. First pitch in there, strike one. So I think what Jack Zarensic said, we're going to go out and get power on. And he did. And it has proved to be a real plus for the M's. Hardsmith against Vlad Guerrero swings and sends it pretty deep to right center field. But Ichiro leaping up makes the catch out number one. Another long out, well struck ball and rests dead in a Mariners glove. He's getting close. If you're traveling and you can watch your Angels on Fox Sports West or KCOP, if you can't watch them, you can always catch the game on your computer with MLB.tv. New 2009 MLB.tv premium features include HD quality where available and the ability to pause, fast forward, and rewind live games. For more details, visit angelsbaseball.com where baseball is always on. Well, Hunter tries to bunt his way on and pops it up. They're making it a little easier on Arzma. Angels, they were starting to hit the ball well when they were playing the Dodgers. And then they came home and they've only scored 10 runs in four games. Hey, Sosha knows that one solo home run is not going to help him a whole lot. But Torrey Hunter says, I'm just going to try to get on. We need a base runner to the chance. Probably so she would rather him swing the bat, but Tory is in control of his game. Juan Rivera, he's provided one of the Angels' runs on a long home run. Then he singled the next man to third, where Morales singled home Tory from second base, a big part. 1 0 count to Rivera. Arzma with an excellent 1.19 earned run average. That's fourth lowest among American League relievers. In 22 games, he has six saves. He's only allowed 11 hits, but he has walked 13. Ball three. That has always been his challenge in the past. Has a terrific arm, but the command was never there. Right down Catella Avenue, three and one. Okay, one can expect another one like that. Up the middle, base hit for Rivera, so he is three for four in the game. He is three of the Angels' six hits. And also made a terrific catch that Rob Seattle of a run. We started the game with. A couple of J's going at him. John Lackey against Jason Vargas. And Vargas outpitched Big John. As Vargas went six in the third and stands to win his second game of the year. If Lackey loses, his record will fall to one and one. Jason Vargas out of Long Beach State. Starting his Mariners career well. Kendry Morales. The Mariners give Rivera second base, but he will be there with two outs. Angels need to get one more man on to bring the tying run to the plate. Mike Napoli waiting on deck. Outside, Morales one for three, drove in the second run. Napoli then popped up with a run on third base. And that at the time could have made it a one run ball game at four to three. And Mike popped up, Kendrick struck out. Angels left two on. And Lowell came on to work a one, two, three eighth inning. And now Archman trying to get the Angels out in the ninth. Yeah, he's going to just pump fastballs in there. That's his number one pitch. Right now he's missing with his location. And Morales might be taken too. I would say so. Well, base runners. In there, three and one. Okay, so just like the previous batter, Rivera, three and one count. Another fastball's coming in. You can just count on it. 
And even if he doesn't, it doesn't have to be your pitch. You, you take it. He's got to look to hit here. In there, full three and two. Miles thought it was up a little bit. Still, a similar situation. He's got to come in. Jason Vargas trying to win his second game. Grew up in Apple Valley, was a Long Beach State alum. Outside, ball four, and the Angels will bring the tying run to the plate in the bottom of the ninth inning. Mike Napoli with his six home runs, a big fly here would tie the game. Well, he is way due. He is one for his last 22. You see the trouble he's had with David Arsman in the past. 0 for 4 with three strikeouts, and Arsman has worked him up right above the belt with a fastball. That's what he can expect here. He may take a rip at the first pitch. He does. Strike one. Right down the middle. Napoli just a little bit late getting started. Two on, two out, ninth inning. Angels trailing by three. Game one of this three game series. Foul back. Now the Angels down to their last strike. Arsma trying to nail down his seventh save of the year. Got the first two outs quickly on Vlad Guerrero's fly ball to deep right. Troy Hunter popped up a bunt to third base, but Rivera singled and Morales walked. Fights it off. You can see where Rob Johnson was motioning that he wanted the ball up, and Arsma missed up by about five inches, but still he had enough late life on it. Yeah, it's just you know, it was an emergency hack by Napoli. He struck him out. Seattle takes game one of his three game series with the Angels. The final score five to two. John Lackey gets the losses first of the year, and Jason Vargas, who went and played his college baseball at Long Beach State, wins his second of the year. He's two and oh, and David Archman picks up his seventh save. That's right, and Ishiro continued his hitting streak to 22 games.